So this one was interesting because it was a follow-up, and I don't really get those that often with the, the write-ins, but basically this person is having ongoing issues with salt and salt management in their fighting game career, right? Um, and they got into fighting games, I think, like sometime last year, so not that long long ago. Um, and basically, the through, through you know, uh, self-analysis and practice, this person figured out that... Uh, their, at least their perception of the, the biggest roadblock to dealing with their salt and frustration is that they feel like they can't acknowledge that the other player is simply better than them, right? Right here. I um, said, in, my, in the time since my last email to you, I got closer to precisely identifying why I get so salty. And most of that doesn't have to do with the game. I get so mad because I feel like my opponent is mocking me and I'll explain why that is. While my ego is not big enough that I go around thinking that I'm the best Guilty Gear player in the world, I find myself thinking that there's no way in hell that I should get bodied at all. So they go on for a little bit more about what the, the kinds of moments in their in their netplay series, and it, it is netplay, this is an important detail, uh, wh which makes them feel personally insulted, right? Examples are when it's a Faust player dominating neutral without trying, or a Johnny player hitting me with an instant overhead tiger knee special move that I had no idea po was possible beforehand. Goes on to say, I feel disrespected and insulted when I really shouldn't be. And this is super interesting because this person is self-aware enough to understand what is happening, how it's making them feel, and understand that this is all ludicrous, right? A Faust player dominating neutral is just a Faust player playing Faust. Faust is supposed to dominate the neutral. It's what he does. He usually has to win the neutral like eight times before he gets the W, right? So this player is smart enough to realize that the stuff that's going on that's just regular shit um, is putting them on tilt and specifically making them feel mocked, right? Which is really interesting because it's the kind of thing which I think... I think, I don't know about all of us, but a lot of us at various points have gone through an experience like this and felt this way, but very rarely would we explicitly acknowledge it, right? I didn't really get good at kind of dissecting my feelings during a fighting game session until I kind of had to do it for my job. And that was where I started to, to like really go in and uncover like, oh shit, there's a lot of stuff going on here that we're not really that good at talking about. Now, I'm not going to go and reread the whole thing, but I did figure I'd talk... If you, if you want to read it, just go ahead and click the link. But I did figure that I'd talk a little bit about this topic uh, in kind of a more, a more general sense. Because a lot of what is going on in this essay is meant for this specific person, although anyone can benefit, right? But here's the thing, right? Like, fighting games are a communicative medium. They're communicative activity, right? Even if we are not explicitly saying words to each other when we're playing, we're still communicating in some sense, right? Um, and I go through this a little bit in the essay, like there's some things that you could do in a fighting game that could be rightly perceived as disrespectful, right? But the thing is, is that fighting games, uh, when you net play them, and it's really important from reading this person's letter, I immediately clued in on two things. One is they've only ever really played net play. They have very little fight in-person fighting game experience. And the second is they almost never use voice chat, right? Even if the game is the exact same, right? Even if, even if we were playing in magic, zero frame delay, like perfect rollback, whatever, uh, net play, the, the, the experience of playing a fighting game when you're not sitting near the person, when you can't see their body language, when you can't hear them ex exclaim like, oh shit to themselves when they drop something, all of that, not having that on net play makes the experience worse. Right. And it makes the experience worse in all kinds of ways. But probably the easiest way to explain it is like, I'm sure a lot of y'all are on like Zoom calls and shit these days. Right. Or you can think about like the difference between talking to a person on the phone versus talking on a video call. The more information you get about a person. Right. The more you can see them, the more nonverbal as well as verbal communication is going on, the easier it is to make sure that your understanding of what's going on is the same as what the other person is is experiencing. Right. If I'm looking at you 
in your eyes, even if it's over a camera, if I'm looking at you and, I, and we're making eye contact over a camera and I can see your body language, it's much easier for me to get the sense that whatever we're talking about and how we're reacting to the conversation is the same, right? But when you're doing, when you're doing something like playing a fighting game and you don't have that voice chat or you don't have that in-person information about the other person, then it becomes much harder to understand what's going on and uh, parse it in a way that gives you confidence that the other person is is parsing it, right? When a fighting game meetup looks like this, it is very easy to understand what's going on, right? And collectively, right, like this group here of amazing, beautiful people, the Nor NorCal Guilty Gear scene, uh, is, you know, when, when they see something crazy happen, everyone's, oh, shit, right? Um, when someone drops a combo, you'll see the person who dropped the combo visibly react. They'll be like, fuck, right? And everyone else will go, oh, they dropped that combo. I understand what happened here. It wasn't that they didn't know the combo or whatever. It was that they made a mistake. I understand what happens. Because they said it out loud, everyone understand what happens, right? When your fighting game looks like this, right? When your communication is good stuff, good stuff. You got me. I'm out. Last one. <laughs> When it when it looks like this, and this is actually this is not the worst for fighting games, right? But when you're limited, uh, especially in the middle of a match, it's much easier to get uh, semantic drift, right? It's much easier for uh, for for you to see something that happens in a match, right? Like you drop a combo or you get perfected. This is the worst. That's right, BGs. Uh, when you get perfected, fuck it. When I get perfected, I sit there and I go, man. Whoever I'm playing, it's probably some random. I've never seen them at all in a lobby before or anything. I don't know who they are, but maybe they know who I am. Maybe they maybe they got into Guilty Gear because of me. I don't fucking know. And they just perfected me. They must be having the time of their life. They must be popping off. They must be saying, man, Pat the Flip ain't shit. I'm going to unsub to his Patreon, that kind of shit, right? No one would ever feel this way. But it, this is the kind of stuff that goes through my head all the time when I'm playing games. It is so easy when you when you don't have that full communication, right? Voice chat, visual confirmation that the other person isn't being a jackass, right? It becomes so easy to let your insecurities just seep in and cause you to interpret every single thing that happens in the match with the least charity possible, right? You, uh, you assume the worst. And you assume the worst in part because you don't know the other person, but you also assume the worst because you have nothing in front of you to tell you, even if you know, even if you know up here that the other person probably isn't being a jerk about it or whatever, uh, you have nothing to tell you that they're not, right? And so what happens is uh, that basically all this shit is going on in your head, right? And you, you kind of need to do something with it. And so what a lot of people do... Oh, <laughs> This is this is by the way this is this is this is why I uh I I I think about that kind of stuff right like oh man I'm sure they think I'm a total scrub they're never going to read my articles they're going to you're going to show up on stream and give me the GGs with a winky face it's because like a not insignificant number of my tournament sets or even random net play sets just end up on YouTube that's that shit that happens right that's that shit that happens when you when you've been around long enough and whatever but so so here's the thing right uh the 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 communications gap makes it really easy to get to let your insecurities um just kind of take over right and net play makes it really easy to protect your ego because usually when you're net playing uh you are sitting in a room by yourself i don't know how many of y'all in chat are currently sitting in a room by yourself maybe y'all are in a family room pc kind of situation or you're off chilling in the living room whatever but in general, it's very easy when you're playing at home to just tell yourself, you know what? Fuck it. I lost because of lag. I lost because that other person is a scrub. And if they were better, they would have gotten hit by my stuff or blah, 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 blah. It's a bad matchup, yada, 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 right? This stuff is called ego protection. Um, <laughs> it's very easy to be a Calvin, right? And just yell and kind of you, 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 you get it out of your system, 
right? That's what we tell ourselves. Oh, I'm getting out of my, it out of my system. This is what I have to do to keep playing the video game so I can get better, right? And in the short term, that actually might be what keeps you in the session, but I generally consider this a counterproductive habit. I consider it a maladaptive uh, survival technique. And the reason is because you're letting your salt, you're not, you're not practicing keeping your salt in check, which is actually a really important part of playing fighting games long term. It's just learning how to not get that fucking angry about this shit, right? When you play fighting games in person, most people don't behave like this. And, and the reason is because if they behave like this, everyone around them is just going to look at them and go, who is this child? right? Why are you here acting up? We're here to play this video game. You understand what's in the video game. Instead of like making excuses, accept that you lost because that's how you get better. We're all here to do the same thing, right? And it, it, it depends on the environment. Not all environments are quite like this, but if you get good, solid, c competitive environments to, to kind of flourish and grow, um, like at, the, at a very basic level, like people are just going to be embarrassed about throwing a temper tantrum, right? I actually see this happen a little bit in net play lobbies too. It's not an accident that most scrub quotes happens in DMs because it takes a certain kind of, when, when, when you're messaging someone, I say this as someone who has never sent someone a salty message in, in, you know, PSN DMs or whatever, right? But if you feel like you were wronged by the way someone else played a video game so much that you're going to type into their DMs with like almost religious fervor, it's not easy to send messages on PSN. That shit's a pain in the ass, right? But it's not, a, it's not an accident that most scrub quotes shows up in one-to-one -one communications channels because whenever anyone acts super salty in a Rev2 lobby with like seven, eight people, it is embarrassing as shit and everyone in there just ignores them or tells them to fuck off, right? Same thing mostly happens in person. Yeah, Super Kami Guru says, I've, I had it at my local KI tournament, had a dude freak out and smash their stick and didn't come back for two months. He's forever the stick smasher. Exactly, right? No one wants to play with someone who gets that salty and that frustrated and can't hold their shit, right? So usually at the if, if you do that kind of shit in an event, everyone's going to look at you funny. No one might want to play with you. And if you, if you do that stuff often enough, you're just going to get kicked out, right? Um, but at home, it's really easy to just be like, fuck it. I'm not going, you know, I'm not in front of anybody. No one's going to judge me here. Well, my wife will judge me. Um, uh, but it's, okay. you judge me too. it's true. Um, but like, it's, it's so easy to just be salty and tell yourself, oh, this is how I play the fighting game. It's fine. Right. So what do you, what do you, well, I guess. The, 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 the next question then is like, so what's, what's wrong with that approach, right? What's, what's wrong with just letting yourself be salty, right? It's harmless, right? If no one's there, no one's there to see it. <laughs> if, 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 uh, if you act like a scrub in the woods, does it make a sound, right? Well, here's the thing. Uh, I have, there, there's a quote that I, uh, if I could get, if I could get it like immortalized on my body somehow, say like in, in, tattooed inside my eyelids, um, if it fit, I probably would. It was attributed to Aristotle for a long time, but in fact, it's not Aristotle. It is a note from a person named Will Cantor, a philosopher who is translating Aristotle, um, which is kind of a hilarious story in its own right. But the quote is, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Uh, this, this left a very strong impression on young Patrick when he was studying philosophy in undergrad. Um, it's probably one of the only things I took from uh, my, <laughs> my undergrad philosophy degree. But, uh, you know, when, if we go back to the person writing in, they're saying, like, I understand that my ego is the problem, right? Um, but I act this way, right? If you know in your heart that you're not a scrub but you act like a scrub it doesn't fucking matter you're a scrub you are what you repeatedly do excellence is not an act but a habit right scrubbiness also not an act but a habit if you behave as a scrub even when no one is here you're still a scrub you are not practicing holding your l's you are 
letting yourself off the hook. You are going to continue to do this because it's the easy thing to do when what you could be doing is treating this experience as practice learning to remove the pain from the L and just fucking manhandle your insecurities, right? Of course, as with everything we talk about, when we talk about fighting games, it's more than just fighting games, right? The way that you handle yourself in these situations, even if no one watch it, isn't watching, is who you are, right? So how do you handle this stuff, right? Well, uh, in the essay, if you go back to it, I suggest a couple things. I actually started streaming in part because I knew that it would force me to... to uh, conduct myself under that kind of social pressure, right? In general, I like I like it when people think of me as uh, a well-meaning, generally reasonable, generally compassionate human being, right? And so when I'm on camera and I'm hanging out with y'all, it is much easier for me to uh, treat the, th the moments that make me salty as an opportunity to behave better and to hold that shit and that actually translates when I'm offline as well. Thanks to y'all, I've gotten, I, I, I've never been like the most salty person, but I've definitely gotten better at handling my salt, at diminishing my ego, and at, uh, um, and, and frankly, at like learning to feel the L's a little bit less painfully, right? Uh, because I've gotten so much practice from having to hold that shit on stream. So thank you. This doesn't work for everybody, right? There are plenty of people who build brands on making jerk on, on, on presenting themselves as jerks. Hey, what up, Juicebox? Uh, that's not you. Juicebox has only made a brand uh, present representing himself as the classiest of individuals, a true footsies enthusiast, if you will. Um, <laughs> but uh, there are people who build their brands around uh, being jerks, and in general, I I know I I know y'all love me. Right, And I know y'all love who I am, but I'm willing to bet that if I were just to explode in saltiness and rage, like there's probably a couple people in, in chat who would just be like, yeah, you know what? That other person did deserve it for these reasons, because that's what people do when they're in stream chats, right? It can be uncomfortable to watch some of your favorite streamers uh, behave poorly, and it is easier if you are a fan of somebody or if you are friends with somebody, it can be easier to, uh, to locate the blame on, uh, whoever caused the thing rather than whoever's reacting poorly. Right. I'm so like, yeah, DSP, uh, LTG. There's all kinds of people who have made careers on Twitch out of being jerks and having their chat back them up. But that's certainly not the life that I'm about. And that's also not uh, particularly good for your health and well-being or for cleansing yourself of that fucking scrubby ass stink. So uh, I'll stop the sermon here. But if you, take, if you take one thing from this talk, it's whenever you're taking what you think to be the easy way out is, remember that you are what you repeatedly do. If you want to be excellent, you got to make a habit of excellence. Pretty much everything I've gotten in life has been, has just been from me doing it over and over and over and over again. Not particularly well, not particularly efficiently. I'm not an optimizer by any stretch in most of the ways that I spend my time, but I make sure that I'm always doing the things that I love, right? Because I want to be excellent and I got to build that habit. So if you take one thing from this video, it's that. If you take two things from this video, it's... Sub to the motherfucking Patreon, y'all. All right, I'm gonna open up some Rev2 lobbies. If we got questions, let's take them in chat. But I, I, I hope that helped, folks. And yeah, I, I highly recommend reading the essay if you haven't already. <laughs> Thank you for the link, Rao, man. We in there, baby.